Uh, all right, so here we have Mr. Corian and Mr. Ben, and they are sitting there, and one of them said ready, and I don't know if Ben said ready. Ben said ready, so let's go ahead and count it down. Arda, let's do it. Here we go. Three, two, one, Shirtress. <laughs> Shirtress. Somebody should make Shirtress. Oh, there's already a Hattress. Did you know that, Arda, that there's a Hattress game? There is. Yeah. Also created by Alexei Pajitnov. That's right. I'd love to know where he ranks Hattress in the pantheon of the games that he's created. I think it's actually a very clever and playable game, but, you know, certainly pales in comparison, uh, both in gameplay and in impact to Tetris. Hattress is not unplayable, Crab. Hattress is very playable. You just have to throw out all your preconceptions. You can't say, oh, this it's not as good as Tetris, so it's unplayable. It is a very playable game. And who knows? Maybe we'll have a classic Hattress Monthly <laughs> one of these months. All right, Corian 71,000, Ben 50,000, uh, now Tetrising 73,000. Basically, even in lines and score. I'm going to need to refresh. My apologies, everybody. Ben Mullen is frozen yet again. Mm -hmm. Well, he is in Minnesota. All right. They had basically identical scores for like a split second, which is my second favorite thing behind line spins. 104 for Corian now. 120 for Ben Mullen. Corian kind of building. Uh, no, he decides to clear away everything on the left side with a long bar and get back to a traditional right side well. And Corian doesn't mess around too much with things like left wells and center wells if he can help it. Uh, you know, tries to keep a, uh, you know, a very easy to manage, playable stack concentrated on the right side with a typical setup. And, you know, I think a lot of people think that what makes Corian so great is the hyper tapping. And while that helps, I think he's probably among the top three stackers in the game and he would be a beast and a contender and one of the best in the world, regardless of whether he was a DAS player or a hyper tapper. It's all about the stacking. You're absolutely right. He's the best. You could arguably say he's the best uh, Tetris stacker in the world. The way that he plays mm -hmm. methodical. Like I said before, you see a piece. It's easy for us as viewers to watch this and say, I know exactly where that piece should go. Mm -hmm. And we have no sort of, um, uh, pressure on us because we're simply spectating. Corian mm -hmm. has that pressure of being in the middle of a competition, but does exactly what you would think he would do in that optimal placement. Yep. It's very which, much, is, which is absolutely remarkable. Yeah, it's very much like Harry Hong in that way. Both of them are very similar in which they, you know, it's almost like you can predict, you know, if they had the exact same setup, you know, months from now, they would put the, even if it were something that we as, you know, amateurs couldn't figure out they would put the exact same piece in the exact same way every time and it's as if they almost have a system and it almost always works out um very surgical with those placements 201 for corian 313 for ben right now so ben up by over a hundred thousand points But this burning from Ben is going to give Corian an opportunity to catch up. But Corian kind of getting bodied by RNG right now and just not getting the pieces he needed to resolve that left side. Finally able to clear away the right side, drop in a Tetris. And he's back by only two Tetrises. Oh, but Ben Tetrises, so opens the lead back up. And Ben slots in another Tetris. So a three Tetris lead for Ben. So I'm not having Ben, uh, uh, for some reason I'm having trouble with, with the Ben stream. I can see Corian perfectly. So I'm going to focus on Corian for my commentary here. Uh, just for those wondering, I just, for some reason it's not working out here. But what I'm seeing from Corian right now is, uh, despite the unfavorable RNG there for a little while, uh, still in terrific position here, drops the Tetris right there. Uh, this is this is typical Corian as he uh, inches towards transitioning. 
yeah, 345 for Corian, 395 now, 418 after a Tetris for Ben. Ben at 105 lines, Corian uh, just a couple below that. And Ben still maintaining about a 60 to 70,000 point lead. Oh, great burn there on the JPs. Yeah, definitely. And following up that with a Tetris. And now Corian is back by only 4,000 points. And Corian takes the lead over Ben. And ben retakes the lead. Ben transitions at 500k. Corian had about a 480 transition. And Corian's ahead now by about 10,000 points. But tricky board for Corian. Not ideal even for the Hyper Tapper. But able to clear all this away. And sometimes, Artie, you're, you're happy just to get back to zero. You know, just to... Like, okay, I've got our normal play field again, you know, and you feel like sometimes I'm never going to get there. But you can see even he's breathing a sigh of relief that he was able to drill his board down back to the bottom. So 594 Corian, 590 for Ben. I mean, they couldn't be any more neck and neck. loads from Ben. He lost Das. Let's see if he can pull it long. Oh no! Ben's going to top out and Corian takes game one. Ben topping out. Lost Das and didn't get a long bar to boot and it was just a fatal combination. So Corian gets the heart in game one. Despite the additional family members. <laughs> you alright, Sue? Yep. Sue's good, everyone. Don't worry. All right. Did we lose Arda? I think we lost Arda. I'm back. No, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, little. Uh... Hello. Sorry. I I don't know what happened there. No, you're, you're good. good. You're good. good. You're good. That T spin was a beauty from Corian. Oh, yeah, that little level 19. Anybody who can do T-Spin at level 19 is, like, my hero. And if they started a religion, I would follow it. Uh, all right, so we need a ready, which we have from Ben, and we need one from Mr. Corian, which we do. Corian is Reezy, so I think that's close enough. Here we go with a countdown. Three, two, one, Tetris. What's the series score now, Van? Uh, it is one game to zero games in favor of Mr. Corian. Now, did you know uh, there is a, also another, I wouldn't say it's a world record, but definitely something, a Tetris occurrence of note was... Uh, uh, I was in Harry's stream the other day, and somebody, I think it was Lana, said, hey, we really want you to score one, two, three, four, five. And there's one thing we know about Harry. He does nothing for free, okay? I've had him as a host, as a commentator on this stream many times. He does nothing for free. And so I said, Harry, I'll give you one chance, and if you make it, $50. One, two, three, four, five, six. You have to score one, two, three, four, five, six. And darn it, if he didn't do it on his first try... And I ended up having to pay that. Down that him. should be 
fifty dollars. Somebody yeah. alert, tw- yeah. Somebody alert Twin Galaxies. That needs to go in the books. <laughs> uh, it's very hard to do. I actually tried to do it. It took me like, you know, fifteen tries, and I still wasn't able to do it. But no, he did it on first try. And all the time he was saying, "Oh, it's impossible. Can't do it. It's done." And then all of a sudden, it just like happened. So I think that's on YouTube right now. It's definitely on Twitter. So I think D'Lo posted it. So follow uh, real is it real underscore ridiculous on uh, on Twitter, and you'll be able to see that. It was a great moment. And I think this is the first time Sue is hearing that I had to pay Harry Hong fifty dollars. But and now Buko wants in on the action. Give give Buko a fifty dollar challenge, man. <laughs> I listen. I don't just have unlimited fifty dollars is to hand out to Tetris players on Twitch, but you know it'll come up. And truthfully, these Tetris pros, yeah. if they can't do it, they should be giving you $50. Yeah, seriously. I mean, it's true. All right. Basically, dead even in score between Corian and Ben, 169 through 41 lines. To CTWC veterans, Ben has been to every single one except for one. Which I'm sure he wishes, like, you know, in retrospect, like, yeah, I probably should have gone to that one just to have my streak, right? And I think Corian just started competing, what, was it 2015? Somebody will know that. I'm sure Louis Scooey knows. Or Chris Zasada knows, I want to say that's when he was competing. I want to say that's when he began. Yeah. So I think three years uh, makes you a veteran. Fifteen. That's four years. I mean, at this point, absolutely. Our champion is one in his first tournament. It's remarkable. Arda, did you... I say that that is the, the, the single greatest uh, one tournament performance in history of all, any CTWC since 2010. That was the greatest single tournament performance we've ever seen uh, in Classic Tetris. Yeah, just in terms of, you know, the stakes, for sure. Just in terms of, like, what was at stake and the whole story leading up to it. Undeniable. And and, and who he defeated, right? He defeated the tournament favorite, which was Corian. Even Jonas said, yeah, Corian's the favorite going in. <clears throat> he defeated uh, Harry Hong, the former cha- uh, champion from 2014, and then swept Jonas, who was the yeah. reigning champion and had been in every single final. Like, that, to me, that's the most complete uh, tournament victory that you could ask for. Yeah. And don't and don't forget, he also went through Yanni, who was you know a European champion as well. So, um, right, exactly. He, he basically unified the belts. You know, it's like he, uh, he he became the linear champion. Exactly, he yeah. unified everything, every single talking point mm-hmm. that you could make. He basically unified into one being. Yep. And then you know when he finally returned to CTM two months ago, and he won that too. So he had literally like every. Tetris championship achievement uh, of note at that time. He's like a boxer that has like 12 championship title belts hanging from every part of the body yeah. because they just keep and creating championships yeah. and boxers just keep winning them. Yeah. And he's just one small boy. Like, how do you get so many belts on one small person? You know, so, who knows? Just, you know. just, just keep racking them up. <laughs> That's right. So 431 for Corian through 100 lines. This is a monster pace. 289 for Ben through the same number of lines. So Corian is just putting up a monster pace, even just, you know, for a straight up max out pace sitting at home. I mean, for a tournament, it's an ungodly score right now. So it's going to be a real challenge for Ben to have to overcome this, assuming uh, Corian, uh, Corian can keep this up. Louis got the answer right there. Corian's first CTWC was 2016. Yeah, see, I knew Louie would know. All right, so Corian could potentially get two more Tetrises before transition, and he's already at 569. He's looking to shore up his stack before transition comes, and his board's getting a little unwieldy, but nothing he can't handle. Ben at 349, transitions at 351. Corian transitioned with a few singles 
into a double. Yeah, I think this is a situational awareness for Corian. I, I think he knows that he has about a, you know, a, he now right now he has a three hundred and twenty thousand point lead. So there is no reason in the world to be over aggressive. He could line out and probably win this one. Ben is going to have to really uh, turn on the gas and hope for an early top out from Corian. So the worst thing that Corian could do right now is be over aggressive. Well, he looks like he's, it's, just, it's all systems go for Corian right now. Terrific build. No concern. Just cool, calm, and collected, as you would expect. Oh, and Ben tops out at 444, and Corian is good. And Corian had a monster pace, 657 through 165 lines. But Corian is good. Ben tops out. So that's going to be a commanding 2 0 lead for Corian in this semifinal matchup. And it is a best of five, so they will continue on. But it is now in the elimination zone. Corian, with one more win, will go to the finals and await the winner of Richard and Joey in the other semifinal tilt. 664,000. I mean, we saw some, we've seen some remarkable scores and some remarkable, we were just talking about Joseph having the best single tournament run in the CTWC history. How about perhaps the greatest final in any Tetris tournament history last month between Corian and Joseph? Yeah, there, there's, uh, there's no perhaps about it. That was uh, definitely the highest scoring and probably just the most dramatic in terms of the actual scoring and gameplay. I mean, uh, you know, just having having to go past the kill screen in order to uh, to win a game is incredible. And as far as I know, has never happened uh, in any Tetris competition before, where you actually had to make it past kill screen in order to uh, preserve the victory. So uh, incredible last month. If you haven't seen that and you're watching this, and you have access to the internet and know what YouTube is, you need to go there, like, not now, but let's say in an hour and a half or so, go to YouTube, look up Joseph Saley versus Corian, and watch everything, uh, especially that match, which is the single highest scoring five game set in classic Tetris history. Uh, and it was awesome. And I was there. Uh, all right, so. Uh, both players are ready. We got it ready from both of them. Let's go ahead and count it down, Arda. Three, two, one, Tetris. You're very, uh, you have a lot of alacrity with your three, two, ones, I think. You know what I mean? You're very, like, you got to get through it. You know what I mean? Look, we, we project from the diaphragm <laughs> and yeah. we make it as expedient as possible. These tournaments are already nine and a half hours long. We don't need to <laughs> add with the count. Nine and a half hour? No, we, th those days are long behind us. Uh, <laughs> nine and a half. <laughs> Nine and a half. <laughs> we don't need to add an extra 30 seconds of uh, time with the time with the uh, countdown. With the three, two, ones. Yeah, the audience probably appreciates that. But yeah, no, we. I think the uh, the longest was just under 10 hours. And that's when, for some reason, I thought it would be feasible to do a full 32 uh, player tournament. And yeah, that was just insane. We did that for two months and stopped that. That was too much. Ah, Ben Mullen is back on my stream. Thank you. Starts with the O tuck. <laughs> Still has a little bit of room to tuck some more. Yeah. With that Z piece in position and will tuck with the J. A half hour later and Arda can finally see Ben Mullen. <laughs> I can finally and Ben Mullen is back. And he is uh, building very well. Uh, he is against the ropes right now. Uh, I see that Belly Friend has moved positions. I don't mm -hmm. see Belly Friend at the moment anymore. Uh, no, he's right behind. Uh, I, I'm not sure who the uh, the woman is next to him. A relative of some sort. Oh, I see. I see. I see. Yeah, I see Belly Friend's. Uh, he's creeping. Uh, forehead. Yeah. Yeah. The forehead is, is 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 visible. I see it now. You can't hide, Belly Friend. We know you're there. All right. One forty-eight. Corian. One forty-eight. Ben Mullen. So many necks happening right now. If only, if only there was a term for that. Yeah. 
for the for the evenness of the score right now. If yeah. only we had a way to describe it. Yeah. And preferably involving two body parts. That would be that, that would be the best if we had that. But alas, we are without such a term. What do you think Corian is listening to? Um I think he is what is what is he listening to? You know, there there's this uh, great uh, wrestling broadcaster. Uh, I don't know if you know him. His name was Kyle Edwards, and I think he's probably listening to probably listening to old uh, broadcasts featuring Kyle Edwards. Well, in that case, he'd be crying out of depression. <laughs> two sixty four for Mister Corian, two forty seven for Ben. So much uh, closer is this match uh, compared to the last one. Man, Ben. Now, uh, does Ben? Yeah. Does Ben, Does ben tend to do better uh, with more uh, people in the room or with less people in the room? You know, it's hard to say. This is a new phenomenon. Uh, this is something that just emerged last month. So we don't really know. Again, small sample sizes doing us in here. So really, we're, we're seeing right now. This is, a lab, this is sort of a Ben Mullen laboratory right now. We don't know. We just don't know. Well, we do have the scientists that show up at CTWC weekend uh, to uh, to take <laughs> test results from yeah. the uh, C from the Tetris players. Oh, so like maybe Ben Mullen is conducting his own experiments. Yeah. Oh, th there's no question he's conducting experiments of some kind. Whether I want to know what they are, I'm not sure. I really do want to know. Uh, three sixty four from Corey on three twenty five from Ben. Pretty darn close in lines. And uh, Ben is just in a really tight spot here, just being down two games to nothing against somebody like Corian, who, you know, if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Corian is one of the uh, nicest human beings in the Tetris community outside the game. In the game is one of the most ruthless competitors. He's entirely without Ruth. No Ruth. What's he's completely ruthless. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. There's never you never not a he, single trace of Ruth yeah. to be found. No, you never hear like, oh, he's a he's very ruthful. You know, he's very you know he's very forgiving. You never hear that. What's up with that? I'll be I'll be here all week. <laughs> Tip your weight stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please edit that out. All right. Uh, four eighty two for Corey on four oh eight. For Mr. Ben and his family. Uh, Kofi, Kofi's asking in the chat, has Richard versus Joey happened yet? The answer is no. That will happen after this. And then we will have our grand final. Grand final is a best of five as well? Yes. Best of five. Okay, we are best of five the whole way through. Mm -hmm. Corian had two turrets uh, there, but was able to realign and get Tetris ready waiting for the long bar. And there it is. Drops the Tetris. Kapow, you might even say. Or bang, you might even say. Right, right, right. Yeah. Biff, you zonk. <laughs> yeah, you got to find one that it's your own. You know what I mean? It's too much, yeah. uh, too yeah. many borrowed catchphrases, you know, amongst certain people, you know, and I think come up with our own. So I go with bang. That seems to work for me. And Ben Mullen tops out 453, and Corian is already there. And guess what, folks? If you couldn't have guessed this result, well, here it is. Corian moving into the finals. I have a third heart, and there it is.